In that valve, open. In that valve, open. The valve's to full power. The valve's full power. Go on, Fred, chance another shovelful. But you won't take it, man. You won't take it. I said chance another shovelful. Will you do as you're told? We need the pressure. It's the only way, Fred. Carew. Oh, good morning. Uh, what are your charges for steaming and pressing a tail suit? For you, Mr. Carew? Nothing. You, uh, you recognize me? Oh, of course. Well, everyone knows Vernon Carew. Aristocrat of song. Starring at the Hippodrome this week. You're very well informed. Well, I'm in your line. Really? And what are you, a conjurer? Juggler. No, no, no. Go on, go on. Uh, strong man. <laughs> You're sending me up, aren't you? <laughs> go on, try again. Uh, trick cyclist. No, the same as yourself. A sailor. Home, home, home on the range, where the deers and the antelopes play, where seldom is heard a discouraging word. And the stars shoot and shiver all day. Don't know the worst property ever, but I'm learning them. Because that's going to be one of my repertoire. Good. Because I go three evenings a week to elocution and all that, and I'm learning to sing, and I'm going to speak nicer. Well, it is advisable. You will make sure my suit is there in time for the first house, won't you? Oh, I should bring it myself, Mr. Carew. That's very kind of you. Why don't you come along and see the show? And bring your girlfriend. I'll give him two stalls. Thank you. That's all right. Now, don't worry, Mr. Carew. You'll soon be there on time. Thank you. Goodbye. And it won't cost you a penny! <laughs>
Keeping an eye on Mrs. Buxton's baby. Judy, guess who came into the shop today? Who? Vernon Carew. In person. No. He did. Did you speak to him? Speak to him? I served him. I got his suit there. And he gave me two seats for the show tonight. Said I could take a girlfriend. Isn't it wonderful, Judy? Oh, I can't, Norman. I've got to play the piano for Miss Dobson tonight. Oh. Oh, I am sorry. What have you got behind your back? Nothing much. Something I bought because I thought we were going to the show tonight. Oh, must have fallen out. Oh, well, never mind. The rain in stains stays mainly in the drains. He's got it. I really think he's got it. Now, let's get on with our aspirates. Number three. Hattie, Henry, uh, uh, Henry, uh, Hattie, and Henry, Hattie. Hattie. Hattie, Henry, and the Honorable Horace held hands on Hampstead Heath for half an hour. Atty, Henry and the Honourable Oris held hands on Hampstead Heath for half an hour. No, oh, no, that won't do at all. Back to the beginning with me. How, How now, brown, brown cow. cow. Very good, excellent. Oh, we must always remember to keep our vowels open. Again. How now, brown cow? Quite promising. And now let us see if we can't get the same clarity of diction in our singing. Sing me a note. Oh, no, I can't sing without Judy, Miss Dobson. Oh, really, Mr. Truscott, Judy, as you can hear, is giving a piano lesson. We really must have a little more confidence. Otherwise, we shall never see our name in light, shall we? The <laughs> mirror. Once again. Very good. Yes? But you seem to have your throat closed. You must keep your throat open. Oh, like that. Oh, that's better. That's better. And now, see if you can't force it all up into the roof of the mouth and push it out through the front teeth. Like that. Very good. Excellent. Now, try to give it a nasal quality up here in the nose. Me, like me. Don't forget the roof of the mouth, the teeth, the nose. Go. See if you can't push it all up into the top of the head. Mm -hmm. See, here. In the top of the head. Now, don't forget the roof of the mouth, the teeth, the nose, the top of the head. Go! And off we go. I shall certainly do the best I possibly can. I'm sure you will. Ready? <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Your breathing's all wrong. What, what do you suggest, then? You've got it all up here in the chest. Yeah? Should be here in the stomach, not there. There. Oh, oh. Now try that. Take a deep breath. 
And don't forget the roof of the mouth, the teeth, the nose, the stomach, <laughs> and the top of the head. <laughs> Go. <laughs> what have I told you to do? You said I've got to breathe in a great big breath and I'll push my stomach up at the top of my head and blow it out through my front teeth. Please. <laughs> now, the most important thing of all, you must keep your tongue flat. You've got yours all rolled up. Sounds as if you've got a plum in your mouth. Keep it flat. Ah, oh, like that. Ah. Oh. <laughs> That's all, thank you, Nicholas. Same time next Wednesday. Now, your song. Oh, no, I couldn't. No, no, not without you, dear. Oh, very well, come. We'll practice Mr. Truscott's song now, Judy. Yes, Miss Dobson. Don't forget, make a big entrance and smile at the people and then start to sing. Right, Judy? Early one morning, just as the sun was rising, I heard a maid singing in the valley below. Oh, never see me! Oh, never leave me! How could you treat a poor maid so? Oh, never see me! Oh, never leave me! How could you treat a poor maid so? Again and again! Early one morning, just as the sun was shining, as roof of mouth, teeth, nose, right up on the top of the head, breathe in with the stomach and keep the tongue flat. You've got to keep the tongue flat. You must keep the tongue flat at all times. Remember that. Early one, early one morning. Sorry. Just as the sun was shining, smile, look at the people. Early one morning, just as the sun was rising. Ma'am, what do you want, young man? Mr. Vernon Carew, please. Oh, I've got his suit here. Oh, uh, down the package, third dressing room on your right. Thank you. Cool. An actress? Oh, gosh, it's so hot tonight. Yes, I'll be glad to get these clothes off. Come. Good evening, Mr. Carew. Oh, it's you. On time, I see. Do you want to put it on now? No, no, no. I've got to make up first. Hang it up over there. Ah! Can I stay and watch you get ready? Uh, yes, all right. <clears throat> oh, I bet you're now nervous. Me nervous? Why should I be? Well, all the people out the front. They might laugh at you. They'd laugh at me. Well, uh, I'm hardly in the same class as you, Mr. Uh... Mind your collar. Truscott. T-R-U-S-C-O-T-T. I can spell Truscott. You want a bit more red up there? Please, please. I have done this many times before. I thought you looked a bit pale. Perhaps it's because you're nervous. I am not nervous. I never will be. You must be a bit. Look, your hair's all going grey at the sides. I beg your pardon. My hair... Does it show? Well, haven't you got something to touch it up with? Well, I, uh, I do tint it occasionally. Oh, no, let me do it for you, Mr. Carew. No, no, it's all right. I used to work at a men's hairdresser's. Are you sure? Of course. Oh, I'll give it a massage and I'll freshen you up a bit. I'll make your hair look lovely. You're very kind. Too hard? No, 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 that's perfect. Does you good, this? Yes, I'm sure. I'm, I'm very relaxed. Oh. Don't want it dropping out as well as going great, do you? Dropping out, please. Don't rub quite so hard. Oh, it'll be all right.
Hadn't you better get to your seat? I don't want you to miss any of the show. Sorry, Mr. Crew. It, it, it'll come off easy. I'll get some petrol. No, no, no. Oh, well, be a minute. Go! Go! Well, I, I'll go and see the show now. Now, don't worry. Yeah. And above all, don't be nervous. Please. I'll be there. Yeah, please go. Yeah. Please I'll go. see you after the show with Judy. Yes, yes. This old theater to me, of course, is just like coming home. And now, please, a request. A request from any part of the house. Maybe one of my old songs. They're all old. <laughs> a request. Vernon. Hey, Vernon. Ah, sir. Your grey hair. Don't show. <laughs> uh, play the music. Marvelous. Give me a night in June, give me a silvery moon, a gal to call my own. Give me a leaf in one little love remain, and leave us there alone. Give me a gal I love. 
the stars up above And I won't have to tell her what I'm thinking of Ladies and gentlemen, maybe I can get on with my act. I'll see you later. And if you think I'm finished, I am equally convinced I'm not. Oh, stop kidding yourself. Harold, I don't give up as easily as some people I know. For years, I've struggled hard to achieve what I've got. And nobody but nobody is taking it from me now. All you've got is a lousy act and a bunch of debts. Which, given time, will be paid. All I need is... A voice. If you could only sing like the little fellow that interrupted your act last night. If you only had a voice like his. His voice. I wonder... You know, Harold, the combination of his voice and my undoubted charm could be terrific. What's the idea? You've just now said I need a new voice. Uh huh. I'm going to have one. His. What? Steal his voice? No, 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 no. 
Just borrow it. For heaven's sake, Harold, hurry up with that tape recorder. All right, all right. Is that a new tape you put on there? Yes, I put it on. Now, where are we going to put it? Behind the bar? No, no, no. Behind that chair. It'll be handier. <sighs> Here, take this. You'll never get away with this. Oh, yes, I will. He won't recognize his own voice. People never do. Besides, the first time he hears it, it'll be on a record with a full backing with my name on the label. There we are. Now, he's late. <laughs> Truscott, how nice of you to come. Sir. And where is your accompanist? Outside. Outside? Judy! <laughs> you want to mind your feet? We don't hang about, do we, Judy? <laughs> Mr. Crew, this is Judy. How do you do? How do you do? Judy, Mr. Uh, Franklin. Judy. Uh, do come this way. Ah, yes, come right in here. <laughs> very, very funny. Got your music? Yes. Thank you. Oh, Harold, be a good chap and assist this charming little lady over to the piano, would you? Certainly. Oh, ah, yes, one of the latest I see. I'd just like you to run over this. It'll give me some idea of your potentialities. And now, Mr. Truscott, if you wouldn't mind singing into this microphone, Everyone does, you know, and it's just as well to get used to it. Just relax. Thank you. When I first saw you I couldn't ignore you, your eyes were so starry and full of that faraway look. I tried not to plan it, then wondered if can it be stealing? Is my heart a crook? But findings is keeping. has taught me what's right and what's wrong. I'll follow a star, but I'm in heaven already. Now I'm going steady with you. Better or worse, you will be my universe. My life will revolve around you. I'll try to aspire to all the things you require in the man. I know I'm not the best suitor, but your zest as a tutor is truly supreme. I'll take my degree, and then I'll study much harder to prove that my ardor is true. Follow a star If the star bet I follow Is you Well, that's not too bad. 
tired for a beginner. You still gonna have me? I certainly am. Thank you, Mr. Crewe. Oh, thank you, Judy. You won't regret it, Mr. Crewe. Of that, my dear, I am sure. But, of course, you still need about six months' hard slogging work singing into the microphone every day. I shall want you to come and live here. Live here? But, my boy, this is very essential to your career. Better run along now, collect your things and move in right away. Oh, no, it seems important, Mr. Crewe, but I'd be come very on. grateful if... You'll be back at six, will you? Rewind. Right. Mr. Carew, can't I do me work here and live out? No, you can't. But Mr. Carew, there can always... only be one master here. Until six o'clock, then. Goodbye. All right. Yes. Just play it back. I'll follow a star, but I'm in heaven already. Will be all right without me, Jim? Oh, of course. I, I'll be fine at Miss Dobson's. She's given me a lovely little room. Oh, I wish Mr. Crewe didn't want me to live in. It's a nuisance. Well, it shows he thinks highly of you. Six months slogging, he said, practicing every day. I know. Now, you want to be a success, don't you? Judy, I, I, I'll never manage without you. Oh, you've got to learn to stand on your own two feet, Norman. You're right, Judy. I must. I, I, I've, I've got to become a star and, 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 and earn a lot of money, haven't I? So, so, that, so that you can go away somewhere, somewhere where it's warm and sunny, and, and, then, and then perhaps one day you will be able to... This shirt, it, it needs a button, Norman. Rome was not built in a day. You need background, Truscott. I shall appoint you as my private secretary. But you said I was going to be a singer, not a you secretary. You must earn your keep. Besides, I shall be giving you a singing lesson every day. Will you? Mm -hmm. oh, I suppose I am being a bit unreasonable. You're a fair man. You really are a fair man. I must say that. That's very kind of you. Well, come along. No loitering. And stay close. <laughs> Just make yourself at home. Won't you sit down? Ah, uh, not there, please. In that chair over there. And now, Mr. Truscott, regarding your salary. Well, now, Mr. Carew, on my last job, I got six pounds. Six pounds? Outrageous. Yeah, but I did a lot of hours and I worked hard. I shall pay you twenty. Twenty pounds? Mr. Carew, oh, thank you. There will, of course, be one or two deductions. Your singing lessons, for instance, say two pounds. Agreed? Agreed. Well, that's a singing lesson every day for six days. That makes 12 pounds. Yeah, but if I have to do that... But, my dear chap, you're still left with eight pounds clear. Less board and lodging, of course, which will be another six pounds. Agreed? That'll leave me with two pounds. Clear? Not clear, Truscott. You're forgetting about laundry, breakages... Oh, <laughs> There won't be any breakages. Just in case. Besides, there's insurance, income tax. All this will come to at least another three pounds. That leaves me owing you a pound. We must all face the facts. The more we earn, the less we have. Yeah. The door, Truscott. Answer it. Me? Part of the duties of a private secretary. You must earn your pay. Well, I haven't had any yet. The door, Truscott. Well, this is going to be a bit of a lark, isn't it? <laughs> Hello. Come on, I'm in a hurry. Got an answer. <coughs> Mr. Harold Franklin. Ah, 
Harold! Vernon. Vernon! Please, do you mind? Well, well Jocko Records fell for it like a ton of bricks. I knew. They say it's the best thing you've ever done. This calls for a great celebration. Truscott, the drinks. Pendlebury is recording immediately, and he forecasts the biggest success of your career. By the way, there is one little thing I'd like to discuss with you alone. I shall arrange that. Familiarize yourself with the kitchen, Truscott. Pardon? Wash the dishes, part of the duties of a private secretary. After all, you must do something to earn your 20 pounds a week. To the kitchen, Truscott. I suppose you realize that it's your future bread and butter you're pushing around. I'm well aware of that. And the more firmly he's kept in place, the fewer ideas he'll get. Well, don't give him too much to do, because he's got a song to record for you tonight. Tonight? This will take forever. You dry now, put away. Fruscott, we are going to have a singing lesson. You are, I'll just finish this lot off. Don't trouble. Just come this way. There's still a lot to do. This way. There still is a lot to do. Something wrong, Truscott. Wait, wait, wait. Into the microphone, if you please. <laughs> Why is it that you are cold and that you are in your heart? What on earth is the matter with you, Truscott? Are you cold? No. Oh, nervous. Quite well, well. Always nervous about singing, singing when Judy isn't here. Oh, rubbish, Truscott. You're with friends and benefactors. If it makes you feel any better, you can call me Vernon. And call him Harold. Uh, Thank you, Vernon. 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 And, of course, Harold. If, if, if you wish, you can call me Norman. I have no wish to indulge in such familiarities. Get on with the song. You do. Why is it that you're cold and then you're hung up thought? You go. I'm going. I'm going. I'm going now. Harold, Harold, you've got to help me, please. Harold, Harold. I'm going. I'm hung. I'm hung. No. Oh, it's no good. We shall have to send for the girl. 
<sighs> Very well, if we must. <laughs> Why is it? Oh. Telephone your girlfriend and get her here as soon as you can. And tell her I will pay her a small fee if absolutely necessary. She, she can't come. Why not? She's gone with Miss Dobson to Bromley. Bromley? Bromley? Bromley. Oh, very well. We shall have to call the lesson off for tonight. Off you go to bed, Truscott. It's only seven o'clock. I don't care what time it is. Off you go to bed. And no reading in bed. Electricity is very expensive. Good night. Good night, Harold. Uh, 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 oh, why is it? Thank you, Harold. What are we going to do? We can't take the recorder to Bromley. Don't worry, I shall think of something. I shall get him to sing if it's the last thing I do. Oh, come on, wake up, wake up. Why is it that you're cold? Quiet, for heaven's sake. Tell me, where does a man always sing? In church? No, not in church. In the bath. You mean you're going... Yes, I mean I'm going. Bring the tape recorder. Come on, hurry up. Yes. Oh, put the recorder in the... Uh, uh, put it in there. Why are you tiptoeing? You can't do this. Can't I? <laughs> Come on. Let me get. Wake up. It's not morning yet, is it? Is it usual for you to go to bed without washing? Oh, I've had a wash. Did you have a bath? Well, it's not Saturday. Disgusting. This kind of thing is not going on in my house. You will take a bath every night starting now. in the bath, there is plenty more in the taps. Use just as much as you like. But remember, no splashing. Oh, I won't, won't make a noise. Oh, please, uh, don't suppress your natural vitality. No? You can warble a little if you like. Steam is very good for the vocal cords. Oh, what do you mean? I, I don't have to hold myself in check. No, no, no. Let myself go and... Uh, Indeed. With, and shout and... With great abandon. Enjoy myself. Yes, yeah, splendid. Right. Hmm. But isn't it time you uh, got into... Oh, uh, well, after this, you know, there's some... Um, I do see what you mean. Yeah. Yes, yes. Come on. <laughs> cool off. What's he doing? your bath, have you, Truscott? Well, I'm just getting the soap, Mr. Carew. He's just getting the soap. Truscott! 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 You all right in there? Truscott! Truscott! under the door. I know he's under the door. We want him in the bath. Oh, 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 oh. Come on. Oh, not that way. Come on the other way. Oh. Oh. 
Get some water. him to sing the right one. Come on. Put it, put it down a minute. All right, put it down. No. What's the matter? My foot. Pull it. Yes. All right. Right. Let go. Lift, lift. It's oh, wet. It's wet. Oh, yes. All right, leave it, leave it, leave it. Come out of there, come on. Yeah, that's what he thinks. Now listen, I want Vernon on his show singing this number. And well, don't worry about your laryngitis. Oh. They'll be playing this disc. Listen, all you've got to do is mouth the words silently and, and pretend to be singing. They all do it on this show. You won't mind that, will you? Well, I would have preferred not to. I never like deceiving my public. But if yeah. everyone does. Good, good, good. Now listen, get this re-recorded right away with full orchestral background. <laughs> Why is it that you're cold <laughs> and then you're hot? You're like putty in my hands and then you're not. Oh, why is it that you're bold and so shy? Have you ever sung this song for him, Norman? No. Are you sure? Yeah, well, I sang it in Bath once. Was he there with you? No, Miss Dobson. <laughs> I am aware that you're resisting. <laughs> But I swear that I'll persist you, little square you. I'll chase you and find you. You can't escape. I know you're. 
perfume and I know your shape. Where have you gone? I'm sitting on a volcano with a halo round. Are you sure you've never sung it into any sort of microphone? Well, I haven't. Why? Really wonderful. Now, Miss Beale. Oh, where are you going, Norman? Well, Mr. Crewe, uh, uh, Vernon is throwing a party and he wants me, as a, an intimate friend of his, to, to get there early. Bye, Judy. Goodbye. Au revoir, Miss Dobson. That's, that's German. I knew there was something funny about all this from the word go. What do you mean, Miss Dobson? Well, didn't that sound like Norman to you? Why, yes, it did sound like Norman's voice. It was. That antique Romeo is singing with a stolen voice. But he can't do that. Why, why it's cheating. <laughs> and cheats must be exposed. <laughs> Nice party, isn't it? It is, actually. Madam? Thank you. That's good. Come in, Mr. Crewe. A light for Lady Finchington. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Thank you, Truscott. Waiter. What, might I ask, is going on here? Hmm? They're Mr. Carew's cigarettes. I'm aware of that. Mr. Carew, someone here pinching all your cigarettes. Yes, I'm sorry. Mr. Carew. I have no wish to appear rude, but as an employee of Mr. Carew's, I say, in a light-hearted way, of course, <laughs> watch it, that's all. Just watch it. Well, then, what I can't understand is this fantastic success. And your incredible humility. It doesn't seem to have gone to your head at all. Right now, what do you fancy? Champagne, Truscott. The old bubbly, eh? It's a zombie good party, this. <laughs> My dear Lady Finchington, I was practically born in the saddle. Oh, Mr. Carew, this is wonderful. Well, mark you, it is a long time since I rode the hounds. I'm afraid I haven't got a very good seat. I'm sure you have the most perfect seat. <laughs> no, really, I, I'd give anything for a seat like yours. Well, Truscott, well, I, I don't like to be disloyal, sir, but I, I think she has got the best fun. Waiter! You're being called. And here's to the hunt. Truscott! Truscott! Or champagne? Yes, sir. Help us out with this lot, will you? I'm in hurry. All right. Oh, dear, oh, dear. You and Alf knocking it back in, sir. Still, you're paying for it. Go on, give it down. Got those drinks ready? Where's the ice? I want some ice! Where's some ice? Where's this is a rotten party arm. Here, here. 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 Here, here.
Arabella. Uh, keep calm. Uh, play some music, please. Everybody dance. Truscott, roll up the carpet. I'm just gonna roll up the carpet. Excuse me. Excuse me, would you mind? I'm sorry, madam, that's quite impossible. He's throwing a party. Obviously. Uh, what exactly did you want to see him about? I intend to expose him. He has stolen my pupil's voice. There you are. All right. For heaven's sake, Harold, do calm yourself. I think I have an idea. with that carpet. Uh, I was just having a bit of a nip round for practice, because I, I couldn't get a partner. I say, waiter, would you be kind enough to, to get me another three of these wonderful drinks? Waiter, what about our drinks? Waiter? Yes, madam. So he's using you as a waiter, too. How oh, monstrous. Will you excuse me, Arabella? Do please forgive me. I don't believe I've had the pleasure. It's not going to be a pleasure, charlatan, imposter, thief. Ladies and gentlemen, I am here tonight to expose a fraud. The voice used by Vernon Carew tonight was not his own, but that of my pupil, Norman Truscott. And you, Truscott, do you believe this uh, rather foolish accusation? Well, you see... Of course he does. So... My friends, you've all heard the charge that have been laid against me. This lad whom I have befriended and brought into my home has accused me of stealing his voice. I didn't say a word. Your turn is coming, Truscott. Naturally, I cannot allow this rather serious accusation to go unanswered. There may be certain people amongst us who find some truth in this matter. There is none. So what better way to prove my innocence than to have him sing to you now? And let you judge for yourselves. Go on, Norman. Show them. I can't sing without Judy. Oh, don't worry. I'll play for you. Sing as you have never sung before. But I'm heaven already Now I'm going steady with you For better or worse I say, let's hear you <laughs> You will be my universe My life will revolve around you Oh, give him a tuning fork. <laughs> <laughs> Quiet, everybody. Quiet, please. Can't you see he's nervous? Give him a chance.
I follow the star, but I'm in heaven already. <laughs> Gentlemen, I think this has gone quite far enough. Have I made my point? <laughs> I dare say you'll think I am a generous, soft-hearted fool, but hurt as I am inside, I am not going to dismiss Truscott. On the contrary, I shall continue to give him lessons, and who knows, one day he may be as big a star as I. <laughs> Take me home, Northern. Well, now, shall we dance? <laughs> It was your voice, I tell you. Well, they didn't seem to think so. You let me down. If you want to be a singer, you can't keep relying on Judy all the time. We must conquer your nerves. It's no good. I did try. You must see a tip-top psychiatrist. So what? Tomorrow, you shall see Dr. Chataway in Harley Street. <laughs> Harley Street? On the National Health? Oh, no, no, no. Dr. Chataway is a friend of mine. And what will he do? He will probe your hidden complexes. Oh. Well, I better have a bath then. Good night, Mr. Truscott. Good night, Miss Thompson. Norman. You must make up your mind what you really want and go for it. What I really want is for Judy to walk again. It didn't work, did it? No. I made a fool of him. He couldn't sing a note without you. Oh, I can't think why he depends on me so. Judy, if I could cure him of this need for you, would you ever forgive me? I'd help you, Miss Dobson. Norman can't go through life tied to me. I'd help you. Are you sure? Positive. Mr. Norman Truscott. Oh, thank you, nurse. Oh, yes. You're the patient who can't sing, aren't you? Oh, I can sing. Oh, you can sing. I can't sing. You can't sing. Sit down, will you, please? <laughs> now, Mr. Truscott. Obviously, we've got a right one here. Right, will you get up? Mr. Trask is up. You come. Come along. Have you ever been hypnotized? No, sir. No, oh, would you mind coming over on the couch, please? Come along. Nothing to be afraid of. And on the couch, please. Right, <coughs> have one there. Yes. Oh, I'll take my shoes off. No, that will not be necessary. No. And so yes, just I... make yourself comfortable. Yeah. I want you to concentrate on my eyes. Look at my eyes. Think only of my eyes. Yeah. Concentrate on my eyes. Um, got your glasses on. Hmm? Oh, yes, I have. I, I don't want my will to clash with yours or anything. No, no, no. Like that. Concentrate on my eyes. Um, again, because, you know, I, I mustn't... What I mustn't do is struggle against you. And it's still, Quite so, right. I'll leave you. You know what you're doing. Your eyelids are getting heavier. Yeah, they are. Good. And heavier. Good, look at that. And heavier. You are in a hypnotic trance. Good. Now open your eyes. Excellent response. Excellent. 
Mr. Truscott, I want to take you back to your childhood, as far back as you can remember. You were just 18 months old. Just 18 months old. I think you'd better grow up a little. You are now five years old. It's your birthday. What were you doing? Oh, I was having a party. That's nice. And who were there? There was, there, there was, uh, there was, there was F F Freddy, and, and there was Reggie, and, 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 and Ruth was there. And what did you do at the party? I... I'd, I'd sing the song. Was it a nice song? Oh, yes. Would you... Would, would you like to hear it? Oh, yes. I mean, yes. I want to go to heaven for the weekend. I want to go where all the angels play. I am only five years old and so is heaven very far to go. Will Puff Puff take me all the way? I have saved up all my pennies for the fair, sir. And Mummy doesn't know I've run away. I can stay all day on Sunday, return to school on Monday, cause I want to see my daddy once again. Did you see your daddy? No. Why not? Oh, Mr. Bloody Chain. <laughs> and punctual. Mr. Truscott, you can become your normal self again. What was that? Oh, I must have dropped off. Here. You did me with your eyes, didn't you? That was it. Well done. Mr. Truscott, I think I've got to the root of your trouble. You are suffering from laryngismus stridulus. Yeah? Up till now, you have been unable to sing without the help of the woman you love. Oh, you mean like... Well, like I depend on Judy. Precisely. All you need is self-confidence. You must come out of your shell, learn to mix with men of the world as an equal, then you'll really be able to sing. Not really. Certainly. Nurse, will you come in for a moment, please? Yes, Doctor. I think, first of all, we'll hire you some decent clothes. Clothes make the man. Aye, aye. Here we go again. Norman 
Trascott. You're a person of great importance. You have great self-confidence. You don't have to rely on anybody. Understand? I understand. I'm a person of importance. Strong, powerful, dominating, like a dashing soldier, like, like a guards officer. <laughs> Oh, nurse, will you cancel all my appointments until four o'clock this afternoon? I'm taking Mr. Truscott to lunch with me at my club. Oh, are you really? I'd say that's damn decent of you, Hotel. Well, what are we waiting for, Chatters Elsport? Come along, let's go. Your Grace. Oh, thank you. Good morning. Good morning, General. Oh. Morning, General. Oh, good morning. Let me see now, your young, uh, young... Uh... No, don't tell me. I'll never forget a face. Young, uh, who are you? Truscott, sir. Truscott. Truscott, of course, yes. <laughs> Known you anywhere. Tell me, are you still with the, uh... Oh, no, no, not anymore, sir. Uh, who are you with now, then? Oh, oh, one of those. Well, it's been jolly seeing you again, my boy, after all these years. Give my kindest regards uh, to the, uh, to the, uh... Do you realize what you've been doing? You've been speaking to General, the Duke of Aldershot. Well, that's all right, Chatters, old boy. I'm feeling terribly democratic this morning. Good morning. For two, sir? Yes, Packard, if you can manage it. You have reserved a table, of course. Well, actually, I haven't, but... Uh... A pity. If you care to look in tomorrow, sir. Tomorrow, Birkin? Can't possibly wait for food until tomorrow, what? Have the old belly rumbling. Today, hmm? We'll, uh... Have those two seats over there. Come along, Tatters. That is the high table, sir. Then you must get a high chair. You hope I'm doing the right thing? Chatters! Enjoying your luncheon, General? Will you start with the sardines, sir? We will not, Birkett. We shall start with something of our own choosing, thank you. Caviar, I think. And, Birkett, uh, see that it's properly cooked, won't you? Are you trying to ruin me? For heaven's sake, stop upsetting Birkett. He'll only take it out on the other members. <laughs> Sir. I say this really is frightfully good of you. Not at all, sir. Never mind the free sample. Let's have the portion, shall we? That is a portion, sir. That, Birkett, is not a portion. That is a dead liberty. <coughs> Keep dolloping. Oh, taking the whole of the day with that thing. Truscott's been out east too long. He picked up some funny habits. Oh, yes, now, and whilst you're about it, give some caviar to the general, would you? on top, uh, some baked beans underneath, a couple of slices of frayed bread, and if there's any room left on the plate, cram it with chips. This is too much. Then, Birkett, get a larger plate. If you don't mind my saying so, sir, Don't I, I stand can... there mumbling, Birkett. Jump to it! Huh. Well done, my boy. 
High time that fellow was put in his place. Gentlemen, I'd like to propose a toast to our young friend here, who in facing our common enemy has displayed a courage above and beyond the call of duty. Yeah! Good show, you're a hero, my dad, you're a lad. Beastly bug, it's been deflated, so you should be decorated, the most celebrated hero we have had. I never was a hero in the forces. My gallantry began with my release. For since then I have realized my courses to fight oppression in the days of peace. Now I started with a fuss on a number seven bus. I gave a fierce conductress tit for tat. She told a poor old dear who got a foot on at the stop, we're full right up, there's one behind, so come on, mother, hop. Then who was it who shouted? There's 20 seats on top. Who was it, eh? Who was it? Mmm? You? <laughs> no. Oh, you deserve a medal for that. Good show, you're a hero. By dad, you're a lad. So the driver never waited. The old dear was left frustrated. You are still an elevated Galahad. Next morning, I was in a barber's chair, but that barber tried to take me for some rides. Ten guineas for a Tony Curtis haircut. I paid a favor for short back and sides. <laughs> oh, yes, now I tell you what I would like you to do. Scrimp it right back at this side. And on this side, sweep it right up and over. With an enormous, 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 enormous bump the back. You listening? <laughs> then I want a nice long fringe down to here. And when you've done all that, <laughs> cut it all off. <laughs> when a bay fruit off barrows, I am very, very blunt. For if this people serving trays to pull the normal stunt, I say, no, not that much behind, I want mine off the front. <laughs> Of course, I never, never, never get it. <laughs> but you deserve a medal for that. Good show, you're a hero, my dad, you're a lad. For a date can taste so dated when it's not refrigerated. He's so very dedicated. What a lad! I walk out boldly on a zebra crossing. I know my rights, the traffic has to hold. <laughs> if, like a matador, I get a crossing and end up dead, at least it's not my fault. In cinemas, I shush when the usherettes won't hush and drown the actors with their chitter chat. Yes, see, so, uh, any old how, he says to me, he says, what about me seeing you home after the pictures? And I said, what? I said, what? <laughs> I ain't that sort of a girl. And he said, oh, don't be silly ducks, he says. Why should the wicked people have all of the fun? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you deserve a medal for that. Each day you read about post office bandits. Well, A was one quite often in the past. If you've got a big six shooter in your hand, it's, well, just possible to buy your stamp quite fast. Chatters! Hey, Chatters! Frisk the waiter. Hey! Would you mind opening? Have you got a stamp? Oh, you deserve a medal for that! Good show, you're a hero, my dad, you're an ass. Can you wonder we're elated, the way he's demonstrated? An ego that's inflated can be simply perforated. We are really captivated with the lad. The most celebrated, venerated, decorated, elevated hero we have Well, Tusk and I've never known such a cure. I'm absolutely amazed. From now on, I think you'll have the confidence to sing like a nightingale. <laughs> Don't worry, Chatters, I will. And thanks most awfully. Lovely. Taxi! <laughs> Dr. Chatterway? Dr. Chatterway? Dr. Chatterway? Dr. Oh. Is anything wrong, young man? I've... I've lost my confidence. Never mind. I'll help you across.
Ruskert! So you've decided to come back, have you? I don't know where you've been or what you've been doing, but I should have thought you'd have shown a little more gratitude to your benefactor. You must make up your mind, my boy. Either you want to be a great star like me or you don't. Well, of course I do. Very well, then, let's begin. I have some new songs I want you to learn. You know I can't sing if Judy isn't here. Then get her here. She won't come. Have you uh, had a tiff? Well, Miss Dobson thinks she pinched my voice and now Judy thinks the same. Oh, but surely, Norman, you don't believe it, do you? Of course you don't. We must think of some way of getting Judy here. You, uh... You love that girl, don't you? And why not marry her? Bring her here to live with us. Faint heart never won fair lady, Norman. I can see I shall have to give you some lessons in that, too. We're going out. Where are we going? To learn about women. <laughs> Muscat, one should never be nervous of the fair sex. You must sweep them off their feet before they realize what's happened. Ah, watch me. Excuse me, my dear. But is this your handkerchief? No, I'm afraid it's not. It's a man's handkerchief. Of course, how stupid of me to think that an enchanting little lady such as yourself would use a great big handkerchief like this. <laughs> What a delightful little fellow. Oh, his name is Poochie Pie. Poochie Pie, charming. I would love to get to know him better. Do you think if I telephone Flaxman 9451? Now, how did you know my phone number? Poochie Pie told me. Then I can't stop you phoning, can I? No. Bye. Goodbye. There you are, Norman. Simple. If you have the confidence to do that, you will certainly have enough to propose to Judy. And the next girl that comes along here is for you. Ah, and here she comes. What on earth? Well, really, trust it. Go on, get hold of this. Oh. Right, drop it. Come on, quick, quick. Excuse me, miss. Is this your handkerchief? Drop dead. Oh. Keep trying. Keep trying. How could I be so stupid as to think an enchanted little lady such as yourself could use a great big handkerchief like this? Why don't you go away and stop following me? Norman, Norman. Yes, Mr. Crewe. What a delightful little fella. <laughs> Sex maniac. Thank you, Mr. Carew. Hopeless. I don't wonder you're getting nowhere with Judy. Hey, you. Uh, yes, officer? Whose is this handkerchief? It's Judy's. What is the meaning of this? It means the game's up. Admit you're using his voice or I fire. You wouldn't dare. Oh, yes, I would. I shall count three. One. All right. I admit it. Go on. I did steal his voice. Put it away, Miss Dobson. <laughs> oh. Stupid woman, do you think for one moment I was fooled by that silly toy? My voice is my own. Now I'll be off with you. Truscott, my tail. <laughs> oh! oh. Mr. Carew, time up! Why? Oh, get into his clothes! Oh, oh, 
clam got time to take his shirt off and his clothes are too big. Well, cut them down and cut the front out of his shirt and tuck it in your waistcoat. Oh, hurry and come out as soon as you're dressed. Did it work? Well, not exactly as planned, but Norman's going on. What are you two doing here? We're Mr. Carew's guests. Oh, yes, that's right. Wasn't it sweet of him? <laughs> what if he goes to see if Vernon Carew's ready? Oh, I'd better go and hurry Norman up. How long have we got before we're on? Oh, less than a minute now. Are you ready, Norman? I don't want to do it. And now, the moment for which we've all been waiting, that fearless star, the Duke of the Discs, the aristocrat of song himself, Vernon Carew! <laughs> Where the devil's Carew? I can't read this. Get him on the intercom. Mr. Carew, Mr. Carew, hurry up, please. You should be on stage. Your music's playing. Jude! Miss Dobson said I've got to go on. Don't be nervous, Norman. Start the music again. The same again, same again. No, I can't. I've forgotten the words. The music's on the piano. Now, don't forget. Confidence, deportment, smile at the audience, make an entrance. That's right. Uh. where you are. Go on, Norman. Sing. Yes. I'll sing you a song, a song that is meant sincerely, a song You've that... You've got to get him off somehow. <laughs> Lyrics of love! I'll sing you a song, a song that is meant sincerely, a song that will bring you near. Come in! I'll sing you
sincerely. A song that will bring you music to me. With thanks so much. I'll sing you a song. A song that is my sincerely. A song that will bring you near to me. With thanks so much. Ladies and gentlemen, have you enjoyed this young person's singing? Sorry, Judy. And now with pleasure, I sing for you my latest successful disc, Follow a Star. I'll follow a star, but I'm in heaven already. Now I'm going steady. Norman, turn that thing off! No, no! Get me! For better. <coughs> For heaven's sake, somebody give me something. Norman, get back on that stage. Yes, quickly, Norman, before it's too late. Oh, Judy, I can't. They'll start laughing at me. Mr. Franklin, tell him the truth, please. Admit that you stole his voice. All right, it's true. Well, what are we going to do? Let him go on. Are you crazy? I said let him go on. All right. You enter from upstage. I'll cue your music. Wait a minute. Huh? But your zest as a tutor is truly supreme. 
I'll take my degree And then I'll study so much harder He doesn't need us now That my ardor is true I'll follow a star If the star that I follow is you